Hello and welcome to this tech tip from Will. In this video, I will look at the different virtualization architectures available in today's market. By the end of this video, you'll understand how different virtualization solutions work under the hood and will be familiar with the architectures they're built upon. So, let's get started. First of all, what is virtualization? Virtualization, in a nutshell, allows an administrator to consolidate their server infrastructures by creating virtual machines. Or to put it another way, imagine that you have six physical servers sat in your server room. In the old days of computing, it was not uncommon to have multiple physical servers on the network, each performing their own task. If the business required another server, the administrator would have to purchase a new physical server and join it to the network. Understand though, each physical server in your environment has a cost associated with it, including power consumption, warranties, cooling, licensing, spare parts, so on and so forth. With virtualization, the administrator can consolidate the amount of physical hardware in the server room and save money by creating virtual machines. So, rather than having six physical servers, you could, for example, have two really powerful physical servers and four virtual machines that run on those physical servers. Virtual machines are essentially computers that run entirely in software. Virtualization allows the administrator to make the best use of their hardware by running multiple servers side by side on the same physical hardware at the same time. With Windows Server 2016, one of the roles that you can install on your server is a role called Hyper-V. Hyper-V is Microsoft's own virtualization solution and comes built into Windows Server 2016 at no extra cost. Now that we know what virtualization is, let's now take a look at how the technology actually works. In today's world, there are two types of virtualization solution. These are type 1 virtualization and type 2 virtualization. Let's start by looking at type 2 virtualization solutions. This might seem a little odd, but despite the interesting choice of name, Type 2 virtualization was available before Type 1 virtualization. So let's look at it now. Back in 2003, before Hyper-V was released, Microsoft acquired a virtualization solution by way of purchasing the company that developed it. This virtualization solution was later released as Microsoft Virtual Server. Another similar solution, named Microsoft Virtual PC, was also released. Both of these products were early virtualization solutions and essentially worked like this. First of all, you would deploy a physical server. From an architecture standpoint, this physical server is known as the hardware layer. The hardware layer is where your processor, RAM, disk and networking resources reside. After deploying your hardware layer, you would then install a Microsoft operating system onto the physical server. From a virtualization standpoint, this operating system is known as the host operating system. Next, you would install Microsoft Virtual Server or Microsoft Virtual PC onto the host operating system. When you install either of these products, a small piece of software called a hypervisor is created within the host operating system. The job of the hypervisor is to allocate hardware resources from the host system to the virtual machines, a process commonly referred to as abstraction. Understand, in early virtualization solutions, the hypervisor, sometimes called the virtual machine monitor, operates within the host operating system and is essentially an application just like any other application. With the hypervisor in place, the administrator can then build out virtual machines. Understand, each virtual machine behaves as though it is a completely separate computer and each virtual machine is assigned its own hardware resources from the hardware layer, such as processor power, RAM memory and disk space, and even has its own operating system installed. 
Operating systems that run on a virtual machine are commonly referred to as guest operating systems. However, in order to access the hardware in the hardware layer, the guest operating system must first go through the hypervisor and then through the host operating system. Although easy to set up and configure, the act of having to pass through two layers made Type 2 virtualization solutions slower than Type 1 solutions. And as such, Type 2 virtualization is not recommended for a production network. Let's now look at Type 1 virtualization. With the release of Windows Server 2008, Microsoft released a newer virtualization solution called Hyper-V. Hyper-V originally made its debut as an optional download for Windows Server 2008 and has become built into every Windows Server operating system released since, including Windows Server 2008 R2, Windows Server 2012, Windows Server 2012 R2, and now Windows Server 2016. However, unlike Microsoft Virtual Server and Microsoft Virtual PC, Hyper-V is a Type 1 virtualization solution. Type 1 virtualization uses a newer and improved architecture than Type 2. With Type 1 virtualization, once again you have the hardware layer, which is where the physical hardware for your solution resides. Next, you would traditionally install Windows Server 2016 onto the hardware. However, when Hyper-V is installed, the architecture of the computer changes. When a Type 1 solution like Hyper-V is installed, the host operating system on top of the hardware layer is replaced with a hypervisor. So what has happened to the host operating system? Well, when the hypervisor is added, it will create separate individual environments called partitions. The host operating system resides on the first of these partitions and is referred to as the parent partition. Or to put it another way, the host operating system is converted into something of a virtual machine itself and sits on top of the hypervisor. When you build out virtual machines, these virtual machines are created within their own partition and are commonly referred to as child partitions. From here, all hardware assigned to the virtual machines is accessed directly via the hypervisor. This makes Type 1 virtualization solutions much faster than Type 2 solutions. When implementing virtualization in a business environment, you should opt for a Type 1 virtualization solution like Hyper-V in order to get the best performance out of your virtual machines. Type 2 solutions are best used for experimental purposes and for testing. Well, that covers the different virtualization architectures available in today's marketplace. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of how Hyper-V works under the hood. In the next video, I will look at some of the hardware limitations of Hyper-V. This will give you an understanding of how well Hyper-V can scale. I hope you've enjoyed this video from Tech Tips from Will. For more Windows Server 2016 videos, please see our YouTube page. And remember to support our channel by subscribing and liking our videos. Many thanks and we'll see you on the next Tech Tip.